What up guys, Andres here with Step for Improvement and in this video I'm going to be talking about 5 crucial mistakes that you should absolutely avoid in your first year of lifting. So if you're down, let's start this video. Alright, so before I get into the mistakes or the tips, I want to say that everyone starts out in the novice phase, in the beginner phase, but this can be seen as a very lucrative phase. You can make a lot of gains in a short amount of time, but only if you avoid these mistakes and learn from me. Alright, so let's cut to the chase. Mistake number one is to not run a shitty program. Find a good program that suits you and take it from me. I've tried out very many beginner or novice programs, so this is pretty much an area of expertise for me right here. I'm going to say this, avoid the bro split programs where you train 5, 6 days or 7 days a week because they are not for you, they are not for the natural lifter and they are not good for recovery or gains. The most important thing that you can do right now is to do your own research about different programs and try to find the program that suits you best. And this is great because it will teach you a lot about lifting, technique, programming, etc. But with that being said, I would recommend a full body program because I find that it yields best results and best gains both physically and psychologically speaking. Let's first talk about the physical aspect of full body programs and why I think that they're superior. If you train full body, you're going to train your muscles more frequently and that means more protein synthesis, aka more gains. Most full body programs will have you in the gym for three times a week. What I've found is that the vast majority of the programs make you squat each single session. That means that you're going to be squatting three times per week. And this is unbeatable if you compare this with the upper lower split where you're squatting about two times a week. That's the muscle protein synthesis that I'm talking about. It's perfect in the sense that you get a lot of muscle protein synthesis and you get a great chance to recover in between your sessions. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of training science like muscle protein synthesis. I'm just going to put it out on the line that full body workouts are superior to upper lower splits because you're going to be making a lot of gains and a lot of lifters swear by full body workouts. Alright, so we talked a little about the physical aspect. Let's talk about the psychological aspect, which is equally important to the physical. Full body is great on the mind. You're in the gym for three times a week. Not only are you going to be able to make amazing gains in the gym, but you're also going to be able to have a life outside of the gym, which is equally important. People will generally underestimate recovery, and that is a very important part of working out, and it fits in perfect with the full body workouts. Think about this, you're going to be in the gym only for three times a week. Do you know how excited you're going to be to go back to the gym for the next session? Not only does your body need to recover, but your mind needs to recover before the session as well. Being in the gym six or seven days, hell, even four days a week for a novice lifter can be draining. It can be very exhausting. Take it from me, I ran a upper lower split in my novice phase and the reason why my gains stopped and the reason why I wasn't making any gains was that I wasn't able to recover, I was crushed after the workouts. I wasn't even looking forward to them. That won't happen if you run a full body system. Now with that being said, I want you to do your own research because I want you to find the program that is best suited for you. I would recommend that you check out guys like Alpha Destiny, Jeff Nippard, Johnny Candido, Matt Wedding and Untamed Strength. Also make sure to find good, credible lifters don't just listen to the instagram celebrities find someone who's been in the game for a very long time and find someone who stayed healthy during that whole time all right so mistake number two is not committing to your program and this is a very important thing to do even if you're a novice lifter it is also a frequent thing that i see among very many novice lifters where they choose to program hop instead of committing to one single program for a while here are the facts, you're not going to be able to make the best gains and the best recovery if you choose to program hop from program to program. Plus, if you're a novice and you find a good program, you don't even need to program hop. You can pretty much milk all your novice linear gains in one single program. You don't need to program hop. Trust the process and commit to the goddamn program. And a very important thing is that I'm in the midst of designing a novice program. Would you guys be interested in seeing it? It's going to be completely free. But let me know if you're interested in it. Speaking about lifting and making gains, I gotta go make my gains at my gym. I'm gonna take you guys along with me to the gym. But I'm gonna pick up filming afterwards and give you those three tips that you don't want to miss. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you're the right girl. So I can only say that it feels right. It feels right. It feels right. Feels right.
Shit. Don't mind me. I'm just reading the 48 Laws of Power. Shout out to Robert Greene. That guy's an amazing writer. Anyways, back at the crib. Tip number three, or mistake number three, is to not beat yourself up. Look, the fact of the matter is that you're gonna have bad days at the gym and times where the weights don't want to fly up as fast as they did last time. Let's face the facts, if you're a novice and you're running a linear style program where you're adding weight every single week, you're gonna eventually stall and you're gonna eventually have bad days at the gym. But those are the times you gotta keep pushing and push through it and to not beat yourself up. I would do this all the time. I would beat myself up after every single bad day at the gym. I would try to analyze where's the fault, what can I improve? And while those are important questions, they can easily get to your head and mess with you both physically and psychologically. If you had a bad day at the gym, it's okay, it's a part of the progress. Maybe you even gotta take a few days off to recover properly, and that's okay, because you're gonna come back a lot stronger. It's simple, if you had a bad day, don't think twice about it. Accept it and keep pushing forward. Alright, so mistake number four is not prioritizing meals and food, and not giving a shit about your diet. Look, this is a very important part of making gains. If you're a novice, yes, you can get away with some things that, let's say, an intermediate lifter could not get away with. But it's still equally important to think about your health and the food you put into your body. Learn about this now instead of learning it in your intermediate phase or your advanced phase of lifting. I've said this before, eating the right food will help you attain your fitness goals a lot faster. Learn about the importance of carbs and fats. Don't just focus on the protein, protein, protein. What you want to do is learn how to eat healthy. Because eating healthy and maintaining your health will go a long way in your longevity. Because don't you want to do this for a really long time? Isn't this something that you enjoy? And number five, the last mistake that you want to do is to avoid ego lifting at all costs. You should value your form over the weight on the bar a lot more. Because you don't want to get snapped up. Especially in such an early novice phase. Be very tedious about your form and try to fix and find little mistakes. Film every single lift that you do. Maybe not everything and not every single set, but make filming a vital part of your progress. Don't be doing no cat back deadlifts. You know what I'm talking about where your back is rounded like a goddamn cat. And don't be bench pressing when your ass is flying off the bench. You know what I'm talking about. Don't shoot for short term success. Shoot for long-term success instead and value longevity over making a PR on a certain day. If you film your lifts and you see that you have very shitty technique on a certain lift, don't go for a PR if you're thinking about it. Drop your ego and leave your ego at the door and work on your form and try to get it right. I would recommend that you join a Facebook group like Powerlifting Motivation Chat or Conjugate Strong if you're into that or any other fitness related group on Facebook for example and post a video of the lift and seek some advice from more knowledgeable people and people who have been in the game for a long time. That is a very easy way to get form critiques. For your own sake, make this your number one priority in lifting to not ego lift and to value form over the weight on the bar. It's not worth it, you have your entire life to lift and to lift big numbers. Ingrain good form and avoid getting snapped up in the novice phase, which you absolutely do not want to do. Now, I'm gonna wrap up the video here, but those were five mistakes that you wanna avoid as a natural novice lifter. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe because I upload new videos every single Thursday, and make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. I'm dropping new content there every single week, like Stoic Mondays, for example. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, and I'ma see you guys in the next video. Perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now.